flesh-eating bacteria may be spreading to beaches once thought off limits, and here's why. This is by Rachel Rettner, Life Science. Flesh-eating bacteria, they live in the ocean and they may be spreading to previously unaffected beach waters thanks to climate change, it's according to a new report. The report authors described five cases of severe flesh-eating bacterial infection in people who were exposed to that water or seafood from that area from the Delaware Bay, which sits between Delaware and New Jersey. Uh, that's really bad news. Such infections have historically been rare in the Delaware Bay as the bacterium responsible for the disease called Vibrio vulnificus appear, prefers the warmer waters such as those of the Gulf of Mexico. But with rising ocean temperatures due to climate change, V. vulnificus may be moving farther north, making these infections in areas previously off limits, the author said. Quote, we believe that Clinicians should be aware of the possibility that V. vulnificus infections are occurring more frequently outside traditional geographic areas, end quote. The authors from Cooper University Hospital in Camden, New Jersey, wrote in their report, published today, June 17, in the journal Annals of Internal Medicine. This is very serious stuff, flesh-eating bacteria. V. vulnificus lives in ocean waters that are above 55 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 13 degrees Celsius. People can become infected with the bacteria in two ways. One, if they consume contaminated seafood or if they have an open wound that comes into a direct contact with seawater containing the bacteria. Although most people infected with V. vulnificus will develop uh, only mild symptoms, some people develop life-threatening skin or bloodstream infections. V. vulnificus can cause necrotizing facilitis, facilitis, a rare flesh-eating infection that rapidly destroys skin and muscle, muscle as well. This can result in amputations or even death. The authors noted that from 2008 to 2016, their hospital saw just one case of V. vulnificus infection but in the summers of 2017 and 18, that number jumped to five cases. All of these patients had either gone crabbing in the Delaware Bay or consumed seafood from the area, and all of the patients developed necrotizing facetis. Fa uh, one, pa one patient died from this. In one case, a 46-year-old man sustained a minor injury to his leg while crabbing, Two days later, he developed progressive pain, swelling, and blistering from his injured leg, which turned out to be an infection caused by V. vulnificus. He needed emergency surgery to remove dead tissue from his leg and needed skin grafts to repair large wounds. In another case, a 64-year-old man developed severe swelling and fluid-filled blisters on his right hand after cleaning and eating crabs. Despite undergoing emergency surgery, he developed an abnormal heart rate and he soon died. And a 60-year-old man who went crabbing and ate dozens of crabs from the Delaware Bay developed progressive swelling in his right leg. He required surgery to relieve pressure in his leg, but his condition worsened and spread to other limbs. Doctors eventually needed to amputate all four limbs, though the man did survive. This is terrible. Necrotizing facitis infections with V. vulnificus usually do not occur in people with healthy immune systems, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. People are at increased risk of V. vulnificus infections if they have chronic liver disease or other conditions that weaken their immune systems. Of the five cases described in the new report, Three individuals had hepatitis B or C, and one had diabetes as well. Now, to prevent infections with V. vulnificus, the CDC recommends that people with open wounds avoid contact with salt or brackish water or cover their wounds with a waterproof bandage. To reduce the chances of catching the disease, it's also recommended that people avoid eating raw or undercooked shellfish. This is according to the CDC.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.